Day breaks over Portsmouth. Home for a 23-year-old British man who's gone to Syria to fight jihad or holy war. Newsnight has obtained an interview with him close to the Syrian front line. They've gone and said, help the people, and you die in the court that God told you to, then it's an eternal paradise. And we speak to his family here in the UK. If he dies in this cause, then he's died, he's not died in vain, has he? He's died doing a, a good deed, a good act. Our exclusive comes less than two weeks after Britain's spies warned about the dangers to the UK from people travelling to Syria to fight. They think you're a threat to national security. What would you say to that? They can rest assured I don't plan to come back. So it's not a problem for them. Ifsigur Jaman was born in Britain. He grew up in the seaside town of Southsea, part of the wider Portsmouth city area. He's been a prolific user of social media and working with academics from King's College London, we've been analysing his tweets, some of which have been based on his experiences close to the Syrian front line. So this is, uh, we've been working with Shiraz Mayer, an academic from King's College London. He's been researching Brits who've joined opposition groups fighting the Assad regime. This is a British national who's gone over in the last few weeks. You can see it's very macho, it's very much appealing to the kinds of things that young men are interested in. Here's this guy standing there with ISIS kit, he's got his gun, his friends are behind him, undertaking military training. In the original phases, people went and they stayed under the radar. The next wave of people who have gone over now, we've got a critical mass in Syria right now, they are seeking a slightly higher profile because they want to proselytize people back in the UK. They want to encourage people to come and join them. If Tika Jaman posted this photograph, we think it's him in Syria. We spent last week in Portsmouth investigating the story of the 23-year-old Brit who told us he's fighting jihad or holy war. Iftikhar Jaman on the left is Portsmouth born and bred. His family comes from Bangladesh. His father arrived in Britain 32 years ago. Iftikhar Jaman used to work with a voluntary group in Portsmouth, the Portsmouth Dawa team. Dawa means spreading the word about Islam. By the end of last year, the young man who grew up around these quiet streets was showing an interest in radical Islam. On the 4th of December, on his Twitter account, he posted a video by Anvar Olaki, one of Al-Qaeda's key recruiters. The base from which the great jihad of the Arabian Peninsula will begin, the base from which the greatest army of Islam will march forth, Anwar Olaki was an American citizen who returned to his ancestral home in Yemen. He was described as the Bin Laden of the Internet. He was killed by a drone strike in Yemen two years ago. Back in Portsmouth, Iftika Jaman was still spreading the word about Islam this April. Here he is at the Dawa stall. Soon after, though, he left for Turkey and on to Syria. He joined one of the most radical opposition groups in Syria, ISIS, the Islamic State of Iraq and Sham, a reference to the Syrian region. He posted this ISIS video on Twitter. ISIS is an extremist group. It's part of Al-Qaeda, and it's part of Al-Qaeda in Syria. But you don't have any doubt that ISIS did form an affiliation with Al-Qaeda? Oh no, ISIS is an affiliate of Al-Qaeda on the ground in Syria. In Portsmouth, we contacted the family. I spoke to both his uncle and his father, who work in the family takeaway business not far from here. Neither wanted to be interviewed, but they did tell me a little about his early life. They told me he went to an Islamic school or madrasa in London for about a year at the age of 11 or 12. But they also told me he went to school around here and college. He was very much part of British life. After several days of negotiation, his brother agreed to meet me. Oh, we lost the light? We lost, yeah. oh. We arranged to speak to Iftikhar in Syria via Skype. Okay. Yeah, no problem. We're back online. That's good. 
He was ready to confirm he's joined ISIS, and his aim was to create a caliphate or Islamic state. He refers to doula, a shorter term for the ISIS group. I am ISIS. I am doula. This is, uh, this is the group that I'm joining. Why? Well, because it literally means the Islamic State of Iraq and Shan. And I came for the uh, for for the word of Allah to be made uh, to be raised, the highest. No other no other law above it. So I am doula, just to confirm. Um, and this is what this is what we're trying to establish: the law of God. He said volunteers have come to Syria from far and wide. God says he will bring the best believers here. Allah says this. And everybody from anywhere around the world come to here. Uh, everybody. Uh, Australia, Finland, uh, you've got Italian, uh, uh, half American, half, English, uh, half British, uh, a, a mixed race uh, brother. He, he reverted. He became a Muslim. Um, and then he realized in the past, I met a brother from Finland, he used to be Christian. And then he became Muslim, and then he came to the land of uh, Sham. Um, so yeah, there's many brothers from all around the world. <laughs> Do you think it is then justified to take up arms in Syria to fight, basically? Fully, fully. It's a duty upon me. What is happening in Syria, all of the people are suffering. There's Muslims dying, they're being slaughtered. Iftikhar Jaman told me he supported the principle of jihad when he lived in the UK, before he left for Syria. Uh, I was already, a, if you want to call it, if you, you know, as they do, jihadi. I had that manhood, yeah, it's called uh, the, the way I was. Um, I understood that the, I was on the jihadi path. I'll tell you that where it all began, it began from the book. And I read this, and in there you see what jihad is about. I used to be scared of the word jihad. I once went to my sister when I was young, I said to her, well, I saw it in the book and it said fighting. And my sister said to me, oh, jihad means uh, what you have in your heart, what you do in your heart. This is what I was taught. Uh, well, this was, it wasn't taught to me that Islam is there's peace and there's no fighting. Fight, it is peace, but it requires fighting. He then explained that when he said he was a jihadi, he meant someone committed to the Islamic principle of jihad. You were quite clear that you were a jihadi, basically, and you are now, I suppose. The duty of a Muslim is to love jihad. Um, one of the uh, sayings of the Prophet, peace be upon him, is whoever doesn't, uh, whoever doesn't speak, go to jihad, or doesn't even uh, doesn't talk about it, dies, uh, is, has a characteristic of hypocrisy. I'm actually a Muslim following the way of the, uh, of the way I should be. By early this year, some people in Portsmouth's Muslim community were beginning to get concerned. Mohammed Yade owns a cafe where Iftigar Jaman and his friends used to eat. I have myself gone uh, to the chairman of the mosque and a few other people who I know and who I know their son. I have tried to talk to them and uh, tell them that please tell your boys, keep an eye on your boys and see what they're doing. You know. Iftika Jaman's brother, Mustakim, who is clearly sympathetic to his views, said the West had let Syria down. Syria called for the world to get involved. Nobody stepped in. And now that the, the people from around the world are coming in, everyone's calling them terrorists. When, you know, this, this should have been a job backed by UN, NATO, whoever. They should have came in three years ago when this was all going on. Nobody came, nobody came to their call. So the Muslims came in. But if Tikhid Jaman said it's too late for Western intervention, help would be rejected, a term which means in this context that forces would be attacked. Is part of the reason why you felt you had to go to Syria was because the West did not intervene early enough? In all honesty, no. Um, I don't think the West needs to get involved. If it's not, they have done enough injustice uh, in other countries. Uh, Afghanistan using excuses like they've got, they have drugs there, uh, invading Iraq, which they found no uh, MOD. Yemen, they kill Muslims constantly. We don't need their help. We don't want their help. And if they were to come, I, would, I don't want them to come. They don't, we don't need them. And if they were to come, they would get rejected. They will, uh, because they've done enough injustice to the Muslims around the world. ISIS has been accused of brutality in some Syrian towns where it has control, 
ruthless summary punishments of those who oppose their hardline vision of an Islamic state. But Mr. Kim Jaman says ISIS does good works and they should not be considered as terrorists. Terrorists don't open school, um, schools and um, places for educating children and they don't fund kids, they don't fund families and this is exactly what um, Dole is doing. They um, provide the community with food. But winning hearts and minds can tactically go hand in hand with fighting. Al-Qaeda has learnt, as an overall movement it's learnt, and particularly in Syria it's learnt, it realises it needs to do social welfare, it needs to reach out to people. So yes, they are on the ground in Syria distributing food, making sure people have electricity to stay warm at night in their homes, making sure people are well protected, well fed, that they have bread, access to medical care, all that kind of civil society stuff that we've traditionally seen other Islamist groups do like Hezbollah or Hamas, but you've never seen Al-Qaeda do it before. That's something new that they're exploring and really exploiting quite well on the ground in Syria right now. I asked Iftikhar Jaman about this video posted on the net. It shows an extremist group executing unarmed lorry drivers, who they believe were Shia Muslims. It's something I personally wouldn't do. If there's some convoys and I go there and I find the truck, I wouldn't shoot nobody in the head. So um, that's my stance on it. Have you ever seen ISIS behave in that way in Syria? No, that's why I am so uh, pleased to be here. Uh, the way they rule is with justice. British authorities view you as a national security threat. What would you say to that? They can rest assured I don't plan to come back. So it's not a problem for them. Are you willing to die for this cause? Life is for the hereafter. So if God has said help the people and you die in the cause that God told you to, then it's an eternal paradise. It's not anything. The sacrifice is small in comparison to what you receive. If he dies in this cause, then he's died. He's not died in vain, has he? He's died doing a, a good deed, a good act. Uh, Newsnight understands that four or five others from Portsmouth followed Iftika Jaman out to Syria. We don't know their identities, but before they went, they left letters for their parents. <laughs> They used to meet at the local mosque. When we turned up last week, we found Hampshire police were there to talk about extremism and Syria. Some in the community told us that the mosque committee was slow to act about this group. I know their parents and I know the children also here. They come here for a prayer time, but I did not know what they are discussing about or anything about it. But you don't know what they were discussing? No, I don't know. I, I was unaware of it, you see, completely. But it was enough for you to put some posters up saying you can't stay here? Yes. But the younger generations say their elders were out of touch. On controversial issues such as are Shias true Muslims, they were taking instruction from the internet. We have a lot more sources of information from, say, if there's a scholar, there was a fatwa produced from um, Saudi, we'd, we'd hear it, because, but they won't because they don't have that source of information, whereas we, we can look around on the internet and we found that Shias are not Muslims, they've been classed as non-Muslims. So if we go tell them that, they're like, oh, you're young, you don't know what you're talking about, you know, blah, blah, blah. But if they were to see them, themselves, if they were able to use the internet, they would see that the scholars have announced that they're not Muslims. A radical view indeed, though there is clearly support for this in speeches on the internet if you know where to search. The story of how this group of young men traded their safe lives in Portsmouth for the battlefields of Syria touches on many questions, the gulf between young and old, the power of the internet and the lure of jihad.